Good morning and praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us here at Be Restored Worship Center. It is our privilege and our pleasure for you to worship with, with us this morning. We want to read a quick scripture before we have prayer. Psalms 136 verses 1 through 3, they say, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. And O oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth endureth forever. Won't you join us in prayer? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We honor you and we bless you. We thank you, Father, because your mercy endureth forever. We thank you, Father, that despite what we've done, despite what we've said, despite what we've thought and what we should have done, your mercy endureth forever. We thank you, Father, for our life today. We thank you for our health and for our strength. We honor you, Father, for being the God and the sustainer of our lives. We pray, Father, that you are pleased with us in all that we do. So we say, Father, create in us a clean heart today and renew a right spirit within us today. We thank you, Father, that you've got tomorrow taken care of and yesterday's already gone. But today we have you and we say thank you. We thank you, Father, that you give us direction. We thank you, Father, that you settle the concerns of our heart. We thank you, Father, that you meet us at the point of need and you supply joy, peace, long-suffering. You provide everything we need and so much more. And for that, Father, we say thank you. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name on this Sunday morning that you meet us exactly where we are. We thank you for the word that comes forth. We thank you, Father, that your word answers questions today. We thank you, Father, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit takes what is preached and gives us exactly where it should fit, that we have answer and strategy. We pray, Father, that your word bring deliverance today. We pray, Father, that you would deliver us from every habit, deliver us from every situation, and even deliver us from every connection that doesn't bring you glory. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you cause us to see things as they are, that we can make sure that we do what you want us to do, that you would be pleased. We pray, Father, for our families. We pray that you would touch our children, our nieces, our nephews, our aunts, everybody in our family. Give us peace where we need peace. Give us joy and that full of glory. Give us more of your presence that we can say like Jesus did, peace be still. We can quiet our own souls. Thank you, Father, that you work out the things that concern us. We thank you, Father, that even in the midst of the pandemic, you've kept our minds. Even in the midst of everything going on, you've kept our hearts, and we still lay them both at your feet. Father, we pray that as our world continues to turn, as our world continues to go forward, keep us grounded in you. Keep us steadfast and unmovable like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water. We pray, Father, that as your word goes forward, that we are better aligned with your will and your way. We pray, Father, that as your word comes forward and grows in us, that we grow up to be like Jesus the Christ and we are aligned with his image. We pray, Father, that as your spirit comes to check us, that we are aligned with your flow and we obey immediately. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you get the glory out of our life like only you can. We pray, Father, that you do what you do and you make yourself known as only you can. Father, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. We pray, Father, for the members of Beaver Stored Worship Center. We thank you for every member of our local assembly. And we thank you, Father, for every member of our E assembly. Thank you, Father, for the ones who get the word on Tuesday, on Thursday. Thank you, Father, for the ones that will watch this replay. We pray, Father, that you answer their questions. We pray, Father, that they get clarity about what's going on. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you get the glory out of their lives. We pray, Father, that you would release provision. We pray, Father, that you would release healing. We pray, Father, that you will release sanity and peace in our minds as only you can. Help us to live up to our name, that we are be restored and we're restored everywhere. We thank you, Father, for our pastor, Micah L. Spates. We thank you, Father, for Apostle Belinda and Pastor Walter and every member of the local assembly. We pray, Father, that you would undergird our leader. Undergird him, Father. Give him more strength. Give him more joy. Give him more clarity of your word that he can feed us that we want no more. Thank you, Father, that his family is strong, his body is strong, his mind is sharp, and he can hear your voice clearly. We thank you, Father, for those who are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that they may experience what you do, and that is restore our souls. We give you the praise for it now in Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you forever and ever, forever and ever, we thank you. Amen. Thank you again for joining us this morning. We are honored to have you with us this morning. We pray that as the preach word comes forth, that your questions are answered, that you're able to get a revelation from the Lord himself and just do us this favor, give the glory back to God. Please do me a favor and prepare yourself for the preach word this morning that's gonna come through our pastor, Micah L. Spates. Receive him at this time. Amen, amen. God bless you, people of God. I am so excited about this day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm making a conscious decision to bless him and to give him all the glory, to give him all the praise because he is worthy of the praise. Listen, we have crossed over into a new month. He's kept us uh, for the beginning of the year. We have entered into the month of February and we are experiencing the joy and the favor of the Lord. Amen. Um, just a quick note, um, at the end of service, uh, we'll be doing Holy Communion. So if you need to take a moment and get your uh, elements uh, together, uh, you can do that so that when we get to the end of service, uh, we'll be ready as a family um, to do uh, Holy Communion together and sup with the Lord. God, touch us today. Touch our mouth. Um, that we may speak what you say. God, we pray that we would decrease and that you would increase in us. God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of my uh, heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We're going to go straight to the word this morning. If you would go with me to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. And in the Amplified Version, it says, the lazy man does not plow when the winter or the planting season arrives. So he begs at the next harvest and has nothing to reap. Uh, the New Living Translation says, those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest. I like to use for a topic today, work this season. Work this season. Work this season. Listen, uh, 
I believe that it is far too often that we are hyper focused on the next season about what is about to happen, what we're looking forward to happening, that oftentimes we miss some critical impartations. We miss some critical lessons, some things that God wants to birth in us in this season because we are looking uh, for the next. Uh, we say it all the time, and I mean, I know we, we, we believe in faith and we talk in faith, but we're always talking about uh, my next season, the, the next level, but have we really maximized this level? Have we really maximized where God has us now? Listen, God is not going to have us in a season that he is not birthing some things in us, that he's not causing some changes to happen in us. And yes, what we do now is getting us ready for our next season. But I just want to put this in your hearing. Don't miss this season. Uh, don't miss this season. We can't get so fixated on what was yesterday and what used to be that we miss the navigation of the Lord that will cause us to blaze a new trail. Listen, if we be real about it, we've dealt with this pandemic for a minute. We, we, we've had to deal with uh, some things changing in how we operate. And a lot of us are saying, I can't wait till things get back to normal. I can't wait till we're able to do things the way that we used to do, but I've come to serve notice on you today. Let's not get so caught up in what we used to do and how we used to do it that we are not open to what God is downloading into our spirits this season. Tell somebody work this season, work this season. Um, and I understand it's like we want to get past this. I, we hear it all the time. I, I've even said, like, I can't wait till we get past this. I'm tired of wearing masks. I'm tired of social distancing. I want to be able to just sit in a restaurant and not uh, look over my shoulder. I want to be able to embrace my loved ones and sit around with my friends and fellowship and go to events and not have to uh, worry about the protocols that are in place and even come into the house of the Lord the way that we used to and hug one another and shout and run around and sweat all over each other and lay hands on folks. Yes, we want to get back to what is normal, but I come to serve notice on you that when God does a thing, sometimes he has to disrupt what has been normal to get us to the next place that he wants us to be in, but the thing is, is that we have to understand the season we're in now. Listen, I'm going to ask this question to you. How many of you, let's, be, let's have, can we have a real moment? Can we just have a family conversation? How many of you have put off something because of the pandemic? There was something that you had in your mind to do right before the world shifted. And you had done all the research, you had it in your mind, and you put it off. And you kept saying, okay, when this is over, then I'll do this. Um, there were some things that you really, really said, uh, okay, yes, I'm going full steam with this. I have this idea. I have uh, this ministry. I have this business idea. Uh, there's things that I want to do uh, uh, as we uh, look to be in alignment with him. But as we have looked at it, we have put some things off because we're waiting for this season to pass. And some of us, have put things off to the point that we are not fully engaged in the season, uh, that we're just going through the motions. Listen, I get it. I understand that sometimes we can be so in the moment uh, and absent of the moment at the same time. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean that we are just going through the motion, trying to make it to the next day, looking forward to when this is over, that we just do the, be the basic stuff to get through the day, that the things that we were doing, we're not as, uh, as, as, as uh, on fire about, the things that we were doing, that we were excited about, that we were doing for ourselves and for the kingdom, we have put ourselves in coast mode. 
because we are waiting for this season to be over. Can, can we be real today? If we would just testify and have a real moment, it's okay to say, I, I want this to be over. I want to be outside. Uh, I just want to be outside. I want to travel. I want to do the things that we did pre-pandemic. But I come to serve notice on you today that we must be fully engaged in the reality of where we are. That as l we don't know when this will end. Uh, I, I know I had it in my mind when, when the pandemic first started. Uh, oh, this is going to be a few months. Right. We thought, oh, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months. And then as it went on, OK, by next year, this time we will surely be delivered from this. But now here it is almost two years in. We have dealt with the ebbs and flows of this season that when we feel like things are getting back to normal, here comes things to shake us up. And we're still in a somewhat of a holding pattern. But listen, we cannot be so firmly uh, gripping on to the past and how we used to do that we are not fully operational in our current season. Don't you realize that sometimes you mean well, but you can be holding on to some things in your mind and in your spirit and even in your physical body that is not allowing you to fully engage in this season. Listen, it, the season is what it is. Can somebody just type that? The season is what it is. We have no control over what happens in this season, but what we do have is we have ownership in what we do with the season we have. Like the old folks used to say, you've got to deal with the hand that you have been dealt. You've got to know how to play. You've got to know how to use it. And, and sometimes it may look like you don't have a winning hand, but if you know how to navigate and maneuver and pay attention, you will come out on top. So we've got to deal with our current season. And if we fail to deal with our now and work this this season that we're in, we will be ill prepared for our next. There's two things that are going on. It feels like we've been in this season a long time, but at the same time, it feels like we're in acceleration mode. Am I the only one that feels like that? That the last uh, two years have been a blur. That when we look at it, it's like, wow, it's... That started in 2020, and here we are now in 2022, still dealing with the same season, the same things going on. Things have shifted, and they may have changed, and we've had variants, but we're still dealing with the same thing. I thought this would have been over by now. So what am I saying? We've got to work this season. You can no longer put on pause what it is that you are called to do. You cannot put your life on pause. You cannot put your mental health on pause. You cannot put your physical health on pause. You can't put your spiritual life on pause. You have got to work this season. So I'm going to ask this question. What did you put on pause? What did you put on the back burner? What did you decide I'm not going to do now because I'm going to wait until this season is over? <laughs> I'm going to wait for this season. The season is a proper or suitable time. Listen, any time, any season, there is always some good in any season that you go through. You can't throw out an entire season just because of some adversity and some things that happen that you were not expecting to happen. But you have got to maximize the season that you're in. Listen, I believe the first point is that we have to know what season we're in. We've got to know what season we're in. Luke chapter 12, uh, verse 54 through 56 says this. It says, 
But he also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain. And that is how it turns out. And when you see that a south wind is blowing, you say it will be a hot day and it happens. You hypocrites, play actors, pretenders. You know how to analyze and intelligently interpret the appearance of the earth and sky to forecast the weather, but why do you not intelligently interpret this present time? Why haven't you properly assessed the present time, the time that we're in, the season that we're in? Yes, you have some things intellectually that you're able to do, but you have not discerned the times you have not looked at it and assessed it properly and gone to God and said, God, reveal to me what season I'm in. All of us are not in the same season. So what you got to know is what season am I in so that you can properly work your season. I'm working it. I'm working. Lord, help us to know what season we're in. And then once you know what season you're in, you've got to act accordingly. You've got to work that season till that season ends and you're in the next one. But you've got to be so engaged in this season that you're not even worried about the season that passed or the season that is to come. But in your spirit and in your mind and in your heart, you are saying, God, help me to work this season, God, I want everything that you would have me to have in this season. I don't want to leave anything behind, but God, I'm going to work this season with your help to the best of my ability. God, I want to know what season I'm in. The second thing is what you do in this season, it will determine what your next season looks like. That what you do in this season is going to determine what your next season looks like. So you, that's why it's important that you work this season. It's critical that you work this season because if we leave some things undone, some dirt unturned in this season, there's a possibility that it will affect some things that, are, that God is, wants us to have in the next season. So if we focus on the season that God has us in and work it, then God is going to allow the, the seed that we plant in this season to come forth in the next season. Why? Because I'm working this season to the best of my ability. What did it say in, this, in the verse that we read? Those that are too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at harvest. What are you saying? That if you don't work what you're supposed to work in this season and do it as unto the Lord, do it according to how he has aligned you to hear his voice as he gives you strategy. If you become too lazy to work your season, then when the next season does come up, you aren't going to have a harvest. And so you will find yourself in a begging position, begging from others who have maximized their season. You're going to walk around with your hand out. God, I don't understand why this didn't happen for me. God, it's happening for them. God, they're doing it over there. God, what happened? Did you effectively work your season or were you lazy? Work your season. When it's time to plow, plow. What do you do when you plow? Turning over the soil and preparing it for seed. When, if it's your season to sow, sow. What? You're taking your seed and scattering it in the earth that has been plowed. If it's your harvest, 
harvest. It's the process of gathering crops. If it's your harvest season, you've got to harvest every single thing that has come up in your earth so that you will have the necessary nourishment. You will have the things that you need so that when winter comes and when the season comes that there's nothing growing, you will have enough. Your now is preparing you for your future. Yes, we speak in faith. We believe that God is going to do some things for us. Yes, we believe that it's promotion, that promotion is going to come. But how many know if you are on a job and you are not performing at, a, at the rate that you should, that you are not doing what you need to do in the position that you have, the, the, the likelihood of you getting promoted to something else, mm, it's, it's a little slim. Because why? They, they're going to look at what are you doing in the position and the responsibility that you have now. And if you cannot prove that you can effectively do your job, that even not even just effectively, but you can't that you do an outstanding job, that you exceed expectations, then the, the likelihood of more responsibility and promotion, it becomes a little bit harder. But I don't know why it is that we believe as believers and in the body of Christ that we can be lazy and not do the things that God will have us to do. We won't plow. We won't sow. We won't harvest. We won't till the land. We won't testify. We won't fast. We won't consecrate. But then we say, God, I'm ready to be promoted into my next season. Why? When you're not even working the season that you're in. The season is what it is. And then the third thing, you have got to master this season. You've got to master the season. You've got to know, first of all, what season you're in. Second of all, you got to know that what you do in this season will determine what your next season looks like, and you've got to master this season. What do you mean? Don't get ahead of yourself. You've got to take, again, where you are and work it to its fullest. That God, whatever lesson you want me to learn in this season, God, I'm in the position of a student. I'm going to learn it. Whatever you want to deposit into me in this season, God, I'm open. I'm emptying out myself so that you can deposit Everything in me that you want to have in me. I'm mastering my now. I'm working my now. I'm embracing the season that God has me in now. Come on, I need, I need a few of y'all to just testify and say, I'm embracing the season that God has me in now. I'm going to say it one more time so it get in your spirit. I'm embracing the season that God has me in now. I'm maximizing the opportunities in my now. I'm not going to look past what's in front of me, anticipating the next. I'm going to learn the lessons now. I'm going to overcome the opposition now. I'm healed and I'm whole now. Your now is preparing you for your future. I'm not going to hold back. In this season, I'm going to praise him in this season. I'm going to worship him in this season. I'm going to align what I do and what I say to him in this season. Yes, I'm looking forward and preparing myself for my next, but I'm not missing out on my now. I'm going to live. Right? I'm, 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 I'm going to live. An abundant life. I'm going to do everything that is within me to do while I'm in this season. I know, I know it's, a, it's, it's a strange season. Sometimes we say, uh, how can we sing when we're in a strange land? Sometimes you've got to press past the strangeness and tap into God and praise him anyway. Trust him 
anyway and know that whatever season you are in that God is with you. Why? He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. So wherever I find myself, whatever season, whatever circumstances are going around, pandemic, post-pandemic, it does not matter what the season is. Mask, no mask. Mandate, no mandate. It does not matter. God is with me and I'm going to work this season. I'm not going to get caught up in the frivolous stuff. I'm not going to argue with you and go back and forth with you that for things that don't matter and waste my season. And it is the trick of the enemy to get us sidetracked and get in these quarrels about things that are really insignificant. And then when we look up, we have wasted a whole season. But I come to serve notice on you today. I'm speaking this to your spirit. You will work this season. I'm saying it again. However long we have left, work this season. It may be a month. It may be another year. I don't know. But I'm leaving it in the hands of God. But the thing is, you've got to give him a yes in this season. You've got to work what God is calling you to work in this season. Leave nothing to this season. Don't leave nothing behind. I said it again. Don't leave nothing behind. Get everything out of this season. Yes, we, we, we know that we, there's great things on the horizon for us. We know that there's better for us. We know that. And because we know that, it gives us the hope and the strength to work this season. Because we understand and know that what this season looks like, it won't be like this always. But I know that because the spirit of the Lord is within me, he has given me the strength and he has anointed me for this season. Listen, he has anointed you for this season. It's not by accident that you're here. It's not by accident that you've had to go through this season and deal with the things that you've had to deal with in this season. It has not been pretty. It has not been a smooth ride. It has not always been uh, rainbows and unicorns. It has not always been celebration in this season. There has been some hardship. There has been some tears. There has been some pain. There have been some questions. Yes, we've experienced all of that, but we've also experienced some good in this season. God has prospered us in this season. He's kept us in this season. He's increased us in this season. He has expanded us in this season. Don't stop working your season. And even if you have been working hard up to this point, don't get discouraged. It's like, oh, we never coming out of this. I'm tired. I get it. Your, your mind gets weary. The enemy starts to speak to your mind like, huh? But I come to encourage you today. Keep working your season. The, the, the land is yours. What is that land? Everything that God has given you, everything God has promised you. He's brought it to you. And he has given you the ability to prosper where you are. All you got to do is work the land. Somebody just testify, I'm working the land. I'm working the, the land that he's given me, the territory that he's given me, the, the area of influence that he's given me. I'm going to work this season. I'm not going to be the lazy person that does not do the work in the right season. What does it say? I'm going to read this one last time. I'm done. Proverbs 20 and 4. Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food. They'll have no sustenance at the harvest, meaning that when the harvest comes, you have nothing to show for it. When the next season arrives, there's nothing to show for it. But I speak today that everyone that grabs a hold to this message will have harvest will have food, will have increase because you have worked this 
season. God, we thank you for your word today. God, we thank you that this is the season that you have ordained. So God, we pray today that you will cause us to know the season that we're in, that we'll identify where you have us, that as we seek you and as we pray, God, we're praying, God, what season am I in? And God, when you reveal the season to us, those of us that have the questions, God, give us strategy in how to work the season. Those of us who are aware of our season, God, strengthen us that we'll continue to do your work, that we won't get weary in well-doing, but we'll continue to work the land. We'll work the, the area that you have given us. God, we pray that you will empower us to continue to work because we realize that what we do in this season will determine what our next season looks like. So we don't want to be the one that has failed to do what you have called us to do and appointed us to do in this season so that we have no harvest. And God, we pray that you would, by your spirit, allow us to master this season. God, whatever the lesson is, whatever the strategy is, whatever the assignment is, that we do it and we become subject matter experts in that area that you have us in. So God, we thank you that we won't get too ahead of ourselves, that we will look to where you have us now, and we won't despise this season and just look to the next. But God, we thank you for this season. In everything, we give you thanks for this is your will concerning us. So we thank you for everything we have experienced in this season. And we say it is all you, God. It's you, God. We trust you in this season. And we won't give up. No matter how much we want to get back to normal. But God, I pray that you will touch us even now, that you will cause us to see beyond the way we used to do things and cause us to blaze a new trail, to see things differently, give us new ideas and uh, give us creativity. God, don't let us be so beholden to the past that we cannot see what you're doing in this season that will take us to the next level and another place that we didn't even know was possible. Why? Because we th our, our thinking is small. But God, we want you to take our minds, to take our desires, and God, lead us and guide us. God, as you align us, you're taking us to places we didn't even know we would be able to go into. So God, we thank you for the uncomfortable place that causes us to move, that causes us to be disrupted, that causes us to expand where we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, God bless you. I just want to encourage you again, work this season. I want, I want you to hold on to that. Work this season, the season that you're in. You are anointed for this time. You are anointed to do what you do. I'm, I'm going to keep saying that. You know, we've been, I've been saying that week after week because I really wanted to get into your spirit that God has you exactly where he wants you to be. And if God be with us, who can be against us? So he is with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Listen, um, this is an excellent time to sow into the kingdom of God. Um, I believe that Be Restored Worship Center is good ground, amen, that we are working this season, the season that God has us in, that we are still planting, we are still sowing, we're still faithful in our tithing and in our offering, and we understand and know that as we do that, according to his word, there is a harvest that comes from uh, what we do in this season. So uh, those of you that have not given yet, are looking for a place that I've got seed that I've got to put in the ground in this season. Uh, we have multiple ways that you can sow in to be restored. Worship Center, 
Um, you can give via the Givelify app, uh, Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, Georgia, or uh, PayPal, Be Restored Worship Center, again, Lithia Springs, Georgia. Um, you can go to our website, berestored.net, and you can give there. Um, and if you have our excellent, wonderful tool, which is our Be Restored Worship Center mobile app, uh, the links to give are there, and it will streamline everything um, concerning the ministry. If you have prayer requests, want to know more about what's going on and just stay connected to us, um, the Be Restored Worship Center app is an excellent tool uh, for you to have. So if you have not downloaded that, um, definitely download that today. Amen. And we thank you today for every seed that you have sown into the kingdom of God. Listen, whatever you give, give it as unto the Lord today. And I believe that he will bless your seed. Amen. Amen. So um, at this time, we are going to prepare um, to take Holy Communion. Um, for those of you who have your elements, um, if you can prepare those now um, as we uh, prepare as a family, even in the virtual space, even in uh, the season we're in, we're still maximizing and working this season. Amen. So we are coming together as a family, as a, bod a body of believers on today. I um, just want to read this for your hearing, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Starting at verse 23, says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, And after the same manner, he took the cup which he had sup saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Verse 27, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among ye, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Dear God, we thank you for the sacrifice of your blood. We thank you that you took on sin for us, that you shed your blood for us, that you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquity. God, we thank you that you gave us the gift of your son, that you so loved us, that you gave us that precious gift. So today, God, forgive us of all of our sins. God, search our hearts, search our minds. God, sanctify us, purify us. God, we've done some things. We've said some things that were not in line with you. God, we admit it. So God, today, before we partake of this bread and drink of this cup, God, forgive us. Cleanse us. God, only you can do it. You are the one that makes us righteous, not anything that we could ever do, but you make us righteous. So, God, search us today. Forgive us and cleanse us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 22, 19 says, And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. Take the bread and eat. Likewise also, the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Take the cup and drink. Amen. We are so thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And it's because of that sacrifice, we are redeemed, we are restored, and we are saved and delivered. Amen. So we are so thankful to God today. Amen. Um, I'm just <laughs> thankful. I really am. I'm thankful. I'm so, so thankful for who he is and the fact that we are here today. And it's only by his grace and his mercy. Amen. Listen, uh, right before we go, listen, I want you to join us. We'll be back here actually on Wednesday at 730 p.m. for our Life Empowerment Wednesdays, our time of Bible study, our time of life application, our time of prayer. This Wednesday at 730, meet us right here on our Facebook page. We'll be having an excellent discussion on this Wednesday um, that I believe will be a help to the body of Christ. And then we'll be back here on this Sunday at 10 a.m. right here in this space. Um, I love you so much. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that his peace be with you and that you experience his joy and that his miracles, signs, and wonder follow you everywhere you go. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Go in peace.